Hey, hey everybody, uh, this is Dinosaur George. I'm here at the uh, convention center in McAllen, Texas. I thought it'd be kind of neat to show you how we put together the arms of Dinochirus. Dinochirus is this giant dinosaur, and that was not a, a, a we, not, we didn't know a lot about it. It was a unique dinosaur because they found just the arms back in the 60s, I believe, and all they found were the arms, and it was a mystery as to what this thing looks like. Well, now we have a much better idea because they found more specimens. So anyway, thought it'd be fun to show you guys how to put it together, so let's go. Uh, first, this is the scapula and the coracoid. This is basically the shoulder bone uh, for everybody to know, and I'm gonna assemble him first. This is the right shoulder blade, and I'm gonna put it on this stand if I can unscrew this. Thing. And here it goes. Gone out. Mm. All right. Yeah. All right. Shoulder blade, the right side. And then the left shoulder blade, I'm going to take this screw off this time instead of trying to do it while I'm up here holding the other blade. So now this will be the left uh, shoulder blade, the coracoid. That's this. This is the, you see the size of this thing. Um, it's huge. And of course, muscles connected this. Uh, a very powerful animal. So this is the left side. All right, to give you an idea of what part this is, this is the shoulder blade. This would be the front side facing you if the animal was standing in front of you. This would be the front side. And the, uh, the blades that go back would be anchored to the ribs uh, uh, through a bunch of musculature. So now we've got our shoulder blades up. Next step is to put on the humerus. Dinosaur bones are not that different than ours as far as how they go together. Animals are anatomically very similar. And so you may ask, well, how does a scientist know how the bones go together? Well, they use the, uh, the features of modern animals and it's a great, uh, it's a great way to figure out uh, how they go together. So let's start with the right humerus. Your humerus is your upper arm bone, right up here. That's your humerus. So you can see the size of his humerus. And by the way, for everybody looking at me, seeing how easily I pick these up, this is a replica, this is a cast. It's not the original bone because the original bones are, uh, well, there's only a handful of them available, but also because of the value and how expensive and breakable they are. So uh, they make molds of them and that's what this is. So let's connect our right humerus and we will rotate the scapula so I can put it on there a little easier. And what they have, just so that you know what I'm doing, there's little pins that connect these that hold them together. All right, so right humerus goes on. Rotate in this way a little bit. Now I'm at the back, so the humerus is going to point forward because that's where the animal's arms would be. So I'll snug him in there. See if I can switch hands without dropping this little screw. There we go. All right. Hardest part about putting this together is lining everything up. Okay. Woo. Man, my arms are getting absolutely worn out doing that. <laughs> uh, I put this scene together so many times, it's hard to believe it was that hard to get that piece on. So anyway, that is the right humerus. So now I'm going to attach the left humerus, assuming that I can attach it without killing myself. So the left humerus is gonna go on. And again, just like uh, you and I, our arms are basically built the same way. Our bones look different. And you know, you may also wonder, um, uh, how do I know the difference between which one is left and right? I mean, how am I able to tell? Well, 
there's certain ways bones are put together so you can identify which would be the right and left. But for me, I've done this so much I can tell immediately, but when we first got it, I literally had to put an L and an R on each bone to make sure that I got it right. So this is going to be the, uh, this is gonna be the uh, left humerus and we'll put it on now. We'll see if this one goes on a little easier than the last one. The last one, see these holes have to line up exact. That's the biggest thing is getting them in there. And I usually use an Allen wrench to connect them, but it's harder sometimes to use the Allen wrench than just to tighten them with my fingers. And this thing isn't going anywhere, uh, so I don't have to tighten it down so much that it, that it causes it to, uh, uh, so that it can't move. Okay, so there you have your right and your left humerus, the right and left scapula. Now we can move down to the lower arms. I'm going to rotate him. This is the front. This is what you would see if he was looking at you. This represents the front of the animal. So now we're going to do the radius and ulna. Again, just like you and I, uh, dinosaur skeletons, dinosaur bones all have some of the same basic bones and the shapes can be identified. So even though paleontologists may only find one bone, they, uh, with a trained eye, they're able to tell you a lot of times what that bone is and they can tell you who the dinosaur was that it belonged to because each bone is different. You know, I would challenge any of you young people if you go to a museum and you look at a skeleton, it's very easy to be awestruck by the size of the skeleton, but if you really pay attention closely, you can see very distinctive differences between the individual bones. So, in this particular case, this is the left uh, uh, radius and ulna, your lower arm bone. So let's, let's see if I can get these on here. Let's see, this guy is coming here. To put these bones together so that uh, uh, you don't really see how they're put together, this is called a set screw. It's just a very tiny little screw with a little opening at the top that fits something called an Allen wrench. An Allen wrench allows me to get in there and uh, tighten it. So that's what I'm using to tighten these, uh, tighten these pieces. Okay, so that is the left radius and ulna. And let's come in and Put on the left hand now for the nasty business the part that makes this such an amazing animal look at the size of those claws look at the size of the hand of this dinosaur just sort of an fyi it's half the size of my body so it is huge now like i said they originally found this thing uh, back in the 60s and all they found were just these arms and scientists didn't know for certain what they were nobody could really figure it out because there wasn't enough there and there was a lot of speculation of what the animal was but those scientists that were most familiar with some other different animal, uh, dinosaur species, they recognized it as being related to the ornithomimids, like ornithomimus and struthiomimus, those guys, and uh, the ostrich dinosaurs. And some people said, well, that's absurd because the size of this is so enormous, it can't possibly be. But once they found some skeletons, and they found some near complete skeletons, they were able to prove indeed it is. Now it's a very odd relative. It's a very odd animal. So let's go in here and let's see if I can rotate this just a little bit and hopefully you won't fall apart. And let's put on his left hand. All right, so his left arm is done. And then we're gonna go in with the uh, right radius and ulna. Again, same bones you and I have, just not quite this big. And then we do his right hand. Again, look at this, <laughs> look at the size of this thing. It is enormous. That seems to be secured. Everybody's connected. Everything's working. That's it. These are the arms of Dinochirus, one of the strangest dinosaurs within our traveling museum. If you're interested in bringing our museum to your community or your school, find information about us at dinosaurgeorge.com. This is just one of a lot of the different things that we have, and we specialize in bringing in a lot of very rare things. So it's a great opportunity to see it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you had a good time, and, and I'll see you guys soon.